What's going on everyone? My name is Alpha and today we're back with another Pokemon challenge video. Today we're on Pokemon Hard Gold. And today's challenge is coming from the comments. Thank you so much for leaving your challenges in the comments. I kind of needed it. But today's challenge will be can I beat Pokemon Hard Gold using only Generation 1 moves? Now, if you guys don't know, Generation 1 have one of the worst move pools in the world. It has some strong moves, but overall not the best move so we're gonna be limited to just generation one moves only we're gonna use that we can use any pokemon however we can only be stuck with generation one moves i'm not allowed items inside a battle of course and as well so of course like always i am going to be using nicknames from the comment section below from the previous challenge videos thank you so much for all these nicknames in the comments if you guys want to be nicknamed after a pokemon in my challenge video just leave it in the comments and hopefully i'll pick yours <laughs> eventually Anyways, if you guys are excited, please don't forget to leave a like, comment down below, some challenge ideas, and also subscribe if you guys are not already. 76% of you guys are not subscribed, so if you guys can subscribe, it will be greatly appreciated. Anyways, with the introduction out of the way, let's get into the video itself. So I haven't actually played through Heart Gold in such a long time on this channel, and just in general. So obviously, I'm going to stick with Cynical, and I didn't realize how good Cynical is. So going through this, uh, it's going to be interesting. So I have to search up every single move I learn, every single attack I do. I have to search it up if it's a Generation 1 move or not. Thank you for Pokemon Database for having all these moves for me. Using Cynical, I can use Ember. Ooh, Ember is a great move to have at the start. So we evolve Cynical into a Quilava in the Bellspot Tower, of course. We're also going to catch ourselves a Centric. Centric is going to be one of the best HM slaves in the world. So outside b-barrel of course so going into faulkner's first gym we're gonna clear through that pretty easily uh, there is 16 gyms so i mean if i'm rushing through it a little bit <laughs> it is a reason why so faulkner is actually gonna be pretty we're gonna ember down most of his pokemon and we're gonna beat down pidgeotto as well the quick attack is also a generation one move so you know what free plays easily and from there we beat down our first gym pretty easily you can see this a lot <laughs> my starter is going to claim a lot of gems for himself Anyways, from there, we're actually going to get an egg from our Professor Aid, and we're actually going to put that on a team. We're going to have a Togepi on our team, which is interesting. I didn't know what I was getting into when I started. So from there, we're going to actually head into Azalea Town. Azalea Town is going to be pretty easy, a breeze. We're going to actually attempt to learn Flame Wheel. Then I searched up Flame Wheel is not a move in Generation 1, so we can't actually use it. So we are stuck with Ember for another 35 levels. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to head into Bugsy's Gym. Bugsy's Gym is actually going to be a bit of a pain. Uh, heading into the Bugsy fight, he's going to send out a Scyther. Scyther almost kills me. He puts me in blaze range at least. I can get my Ember up a little bit more, but he almost knocks me out. If he crits me at any point, I would have lost. But as long as I'm in blaze range, I can't lose at this point. Uh, he also only has a Metapod and Kakuna, so Bugsy goes down very easily. And, you know, that's not my problem. From there, we're going to beat down Silver, of course, you know, quickly. Then catch the Farfetch. Then head into this Move Tutor, which Headbutt is surprisingly a Generation 1 move, so we can use that. And we got that on all our Pokemon. From there, we're actually going to head into Goldenrod City. Goldenrod City has this giant mall for us, which we can buy TMs. I'm not sure why they gave it to us so early in the game, but you know what? I'll take it. I'll take it because we can learn Fire Blast. We're going to put Fire Blast on a cool level as well as get some Metronome for ourselves in the game corner. And now, you know, our cool level is kind of boosted up. It's kind of a monster. Now heading into the next gym, the third gym of the game, which is Whitney. Uh, we're going to clear through this pretty easily. Just going to... You know, get some levels on our core level and then head into the Whitney fight. Whitney's going to be, you know, the normal type gym leader of the game. And we're going to fight down her Clefairy first. I'm going to miss the Fire Blast, but, you know, as long as I hit the second one, we're all good. Uh, as Metronome is rolling. I forget how Metronome works in these older generations, but I know newer generations is really good. But I crit down the Milk Tank and, well, <laughs> that's the end of Whitney. All the pain as a kid trying to beat down Whitney, you know, is gone. From here, we actually evolve our Sentret into a fur yeah we use other pokemon we try to you know we try to we also evolve our togepi into a togetic here and then realize that my fur has only normal type moves but that's okay because it has foresight unfortunately foresight is not a generation one move so we can't actually use it oh my god so we gotta stick with our Quilava. i'm not complaining Quilava is a really good pokemon so heading to the fourth gym of the game, which is against Morty. Morty's going to be the ghost type gym leader. We're going to beat down his Ghastly pretty easily. Uh, he's going to mean look me. He doesn't really attack me in this. I just realized that. And then his Gengar comes out. Uh, I'm afraid this Fire Blast kills. He only uses mean look. He outspeed speed, but you know, Fire Blast crits and knocks it out. So we don't have to worry about that. His Hunter comes out. I'm a Fire Blast that thing as well. And then it knocks it out. 
so metronome is rolling again i still don't know how metronome works in generation 4 but i know it's really good in the other generations but we hit three fire blasts and that's the end of morty pretty easily i'm not gonna lie so from there we actually get the tm for shadow ball and then realize shadow ball is not a tm from generation one. Oh my god i hate this challenge because i can't use any moves at all i'm stuck with ember and fire blast by the way from here we're gonna head into olivine city after getting surf in ecritique city head into the lighthouse clear through that and then evolve our quilava into a typhlosion typhlosion one of my favorite pokemon of all time still only has ember but you know what we we just deal with it uh, and then head into chuck's gym chuck's gym will be the fighting type gym of the game and we're going to beat down his primate very easily at the start. I mean, that's pretty easy. And then uh, he sends out his polyrath. His polyrath actually knocks down my Typhlosion, which is, you know, not not really respectable. I almost knock it out with Headbutt, but unfortunately it didn't flinch. It knocks me out. And then I got to rely on my other Pokemon. It beats down my Furret. It puts it to sleep and just beats it down, which is a bit annoying. But then I send him my Togetic. Somehow this works. Togetic actually just headbutts it because it threw. It just kept using Focus Punch. And then, you know, uh uh, why? Why did why did it work? But it worked out. Togetic gets his first kill, and you know we don't have to rely on Typhlosion for that gym. From there, we're gonna go back, help the Ampharos with Jasmine, and then beat down Jasmine pretty easily. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna uh, she can send his Metatype first, Ember it, and then Steelix comes out. I'm a Fire Blast it. No worries at all. One shot KO, and then beat down the next Magnemite, and then that's it. Now heading into Bill's little house over here, we're gonna get an Eevee for us. Unfortunately, we can't get any of the evolutionary stones right now. And I'm mad about it. <laughs> I'm super mad about it. I can't get the shiny stone for my Togetic. I can't get the Thunderstone for my Jolteon. Oh, this is so annoying. From here, we're actually gonna go into the Lake of Rage and then catch ourselves a Red Gyarados. I really enjoy Red Gyarados. I love Red Gyarados. He's clearing through the Team Rocket hideout right now. And I just... You know, I, Charlie the Red Gyarados. That's a new thing. Clearing through the Team Rocket hideout is pretty easy. Uh, until we've got into this double battle against Lance, and Lance decides to beat down the weaker Pokemon while I take on the stronger Pokemon. It's kind of annoying. He doesn't really do anything for me because I gotta knock out all the strong Pokemon. I even do most of the damage on the weaker Pokemon too. So I don't understand what Lance is doing. I'll be honest. He even misses Thunder. So like, what what is the point of you? From there, we're actually going to head into Bryce's gym. Bryce is just going to be the ice type gym leader. And clearing do it pretty easily with my because, yeah, <laughs> Typhlosion is really, really good in this game. He's incredibly good. He is just destroying everything. He has Ember. Anyways, we're going to fight the seventh gym leader of the game, which is Price. He's going to start out with a seal. Um, it's just two headbutts knock it out. Uh, this is a dumb move set. Headbutt, smoke screen, Ember, and Fire Blast. Those are the only moves I have. Anyways, I fire blast down the seal and knock it out so I could get my metronome rolling. Uh, since I was pilot spawn, I'm gonna miss my fire blast, which is, you know, not the best, but luckily I hit the second one and knock it out. And then the dugun comes out, I'm gonna slowly whittle it down using my fire blast, uh, but I keep missing, so I resort to headbutt. And then his aurora beam doesn't knock me out, actually. Yeah, it took three of them, he still couldn't knock me out, but his ice shard finally finished me off, which is a bit annoying, but it's alright. It's alright. I'm sending my Charlie, my Gyarados, and you know, Gyarados would knock it out using strength. I don't know why I didn't guarantee myself using Dragon Rage, but it's okay. Um, this is the reason why I'm not a big fan of Harko's leveling system because the seventh gym of the game is level 30. I mean, come on. They could have had better leveling. Anyways, can head into uh, the radio station where Team Rocket is occupying it, clear through it pretty easily, and then head into the basement, clear through that. I finally learned the little pattern. Well, we're gonna beat our rival first, and then the pattern is actually just left to right. I mean, <laughs> I have known this for a little while now, but like it still amazes me every time I do it. Anyways, heading through the top of the radio station, we're gonna clear through each of the Team Rocket admins pretty easily, and then head into the top where we're gonna fight Archer, which I don't know who Archer is, <laughs> honestly. I don't know. Who, I mean, maybe he's in like the manga or whatever, but you know what? Typhlosion is just knocking everything out pretty easily. Yeah, I mean, it made quick work of Team Rocket. I feel like gold from the manga is <laughs> so just destroying everything with my Typhlosion. What's his name? Ethan or something like that? He's something like that in the anime. Anyways, heading into uh, the final gym of the game, which is in Blackthorn City. Just kidding, this is not the final gym. What am I talking about? There's eight more gyms after this one. <laughs> Anyways, we... Okay, I don't hate me, but I've taught my Gyarados Ice Beam from the game corner. Look, I know, I know Gyarados is not a physical attacker but in generation one he learned so many good special moves that i just made him a special attacker so i mean he's just beating down these dragon tights for me so i mean luckily it worked out so heading into the gym fight against claire i mean he doesn't do too well 
So he's gonna start off the gym fight against Claire. Uh, Gyarados versus my <laughs> Furret. Furret gets knocked down pretty easily. That's not too good. I'm gonna beat down the Gyarados and then the Kingdra comes out. I'm actually knock it out. I'm gonna survive one Hydro Pump, but then I'm gonna knock it out with Headbutt. And then from there, he's gonna send out his Dragonair and I'm gonna Headbutt it. Flinched it. Like, oh my god, that's, <laughs> that's a lot of damage. And then I'm gonna Fire Blast it. I don't know why I Fire Blast, I'll be honest. Oh, I think I ran out of Headbutts. <laughs> uh, fire Blast and Flamethrower knocks it out, and that's the end of Claire. So from there, we're going to go into the Dragon's Den, clear through that pretty easily, get our Gym Badge, finally, and then head into Victory Road. Victory Road, I mean, I'm, I forget where the TM for Earthquake is, so I'm just completely lost. So, I'm just running around. I beat our rival pretty easily, I mean, just using Typhlosion again. And then, you know, do a little training in Victory Road to get our Pokemon up to a little more levels. Uh, no one's going to be anywhere good outside of Typhlosion and Gyarados, but you know what, we're going to try. Anyways, heading into the first Elite Four member of the game, which is against Will. Will is going to be the Psychic type Elite Four member, and we're going to use Flamethrower. We went to the Lake of Rage, uh, we did some time tinkering, and we got the choice specs. We also got, you know, some other charcoals and, you know, metronomes for our team. But you know what, a choice spec will actually knock down the rest of Will's team pretty easily. I mean, I 1v1 the slow bro. I mean, it's, it's not really a 1v1 if it just lets me beat him. And then the Jinx, and then the extra Zatu, and that's the end. <laughs> that's the end for her will. Anyways, Koga comes out. Koga's gonna meet the same fate. Uh, this Crobat almost beats me with double team. Luckily, I woke up and then just burned it. Flamethrower knocks it out, and Venomoth. It's a Venomoth. It's not gonna survive anything. Anyways, heading into Bruno. Bruno's gonna be the fighting type, kinda. He has an Onyx for no reason, but he is a fighting type team. Anyways, Flamethrower will knock down him on top, and the Onyx. And then Gyarados actually finished things off against the Machamp. Typhlosion will actually kill the Hitmonchan, however, Hitmonlee actually misses his high jump kick against my Eevee, and Eevee gets the XP for it. I, I mean, Eevee gets free XP, can't complain about that. Anyways, heading to Karen. Karen's gonna be the dark type, kinda. Um, what is she? What is she? <laughs> what, what does she specialize in? She can start off with her Umbreon first. I'm a flamethrower that thing down. Two shots it, even crits it. Doesn't really matter, but then Gengar comes out. It lives with one HP, then she sends out her Houndoom. I'm gonna knock it out. I'm gonna knock it out using my Gyarados. Uh, just kidding, I don't. He's gonna flamethrower me, and I miss two Hydro Pumps, and I get burned, and that's the end <laughs> of my Gyarados. But luckily, I this is this is even more dumb. So I headbutt it, <laughs> flinched it, then headbutt it again, flinched it, and then headbutt it again, crit it, <laughs> and then that's how I beat the Houndoom. <laughs> oh jeez. So the Gengar comes out, it's gonna Destiny Bomb me, and knock. Out. It's just gonna. Why? It just Destiny Bond baited me and then knocks out my Typhlosion. But luckily, final Pokemon will be Murkrow. And luckily, Togetic will actually beat the Murkrow. And whew, we beat Karen. I don't understand. But I, mean, I don't know how I got baited into a Destiny Bond by an NPC. Heading into the champion room against Lance. Lance is actually going to be kind of a kind of an easy kind of easy win. We're going to beat down the Gyarados. And then we're, our Typhlosion actually 1v1s the Aerodactyl for us. Pretty easy. And then... <laughs> Gyarados goes crazy. I mean, Typhlosion knocks out the first Dragonite for us, and then Gyarados knocks out the second one and the third one completely easily with his Ice Beam. Don't discount special attacking Gyarados. Uh, clean Ice Beams into the face, and that's it. And then Charizard just misses every single Air Slash in the world, and we beat down the Charizard. <laughs> How did this happen? Thunder actually crits it at the end. As he misses his final air slash, and we beat in <laughs> we beat in Lance using a special attacking red Gyarados. Uh, you can't make that up. That was impressive. Anyways, heading into Kanto now. <laughs> We're gonna do the boat things already. Then head into Lieutenant Surge's little gym. We're gonna clear through Surge's pretty easy. Our um, Typhlosion is a bit over level, as you can see. Cleared through him pretty easily, just using Flamethrower over and over. And then heading to the next gym, which is. Pewter City, because why not? <laughs> We're going to Pewter City. Anyways, found out my top potion is pretty strong when it one shots a Rhydon in his face. But heading into. Why does he have a Rhydon, but Brock doesn't? What? How does that happen? Anyways, heading into Brock. His, his other trainer has a Golem and he has a Graveler. What is Brock doing? <laughs> Wait a second. Why do you have children in your gym? Brock, there's some. Mm -mm -mm. Anyways, Flamethrower knocks down the Rhyhorn and the Graveler. And then I sent out my Jolteon, which I finally got, will knock out the Amistar for me. And then uh, I sent out my <laughs> Flamethrowing Typhlosion. Doesn't knock out the Onyx in one shot, but you know, Onyx is kind of weak. It doesn't even knock me out to half HP. So 
We knock out the Onyx pretty easily. And then of course Jotun takes the final kill and kills down the and knocks down the and knocks down a couple tops for us. And then now we're gonna head into Akritik City. I forgot to record Misty's part, but uh, I think you could assume what happens. I think I use my Jotun and just beat her down. Heading into Saladon City, where the next gym leader will be, which is against the grass type gym leader, <laughs> which is Erica. And we're gonna fling through her down all her Pokemon. Every single one of her Pokemon is dying. So there goes to skip there goes to skip blue. There goes the Tangela, there goes the Victory Bow. And the Bell Awesome at the end will get finished. And that's the end of Erica. Sorry to say she's not a problem. Speaking of not being a problem, we're going to Janie's gym. Janie's gonna be the little niece of Koga, something like that, right? Anyways, can flame through her down her direct <laughs> the entire team of hers pretty easily. I mean Luckily, Flamethrower is a Generation 1 move, and we clear through that easily, heading to Sabrina. All these Generation 1 gems are super easily, just Flamethrower over and over. We even one shot at Alakazam pretty easily, and now heading to Blaine's gym. This, this time, I'm scared to use Flamethrower for once. Anyways, heading to Blaine's gym, I'm going to start off using my Gyarados. He's actually going to start with his Mad Cargo. I missed the Hydro Pump, which allows him to set up a sunny day, so I got scared. I was sending to my Togekiss, Togekiss dies. <laughs> So I send my Jotun, Jotun actually destroys the Mac Cargo in two shots. I live an overheat, which is impressive. Thunderbolt downs the Mac Cargo. Then he sends in his Magmar, and then I two shot that thing down. He misses his overheat, so I <laughs> just beat him down with a Jotun. Rapidash knocks me out, but luckily in the back I do have a Gyarados, which will knock out the Rapidash eventually. I mean, eventually knock him out. It uh, takes another, you know, Hydro Pump. But we beat down Blaine. And now the final gym is in the cards. We are going to Blue's gym in Viridian City. And, you know, his gym is actually kind of hard. Not gonna lie. So heading into Blue. Blue is gonna be the final gym leader of the entire game. <laughs> Finally. Now heading into him. He's gonna start with his exec. He's gonna start with his executor. He has a trick from executor. So, you know, a bit of a scary. But, you know, Flamethrower knocks him down super easily. Rhydon comes out. I'm gonna assume that my Gyarados can hit a Hydro Pump at some point. It does not, so I can't rely on a Hydro Pump and Gyarados ever again. He doesn't choke in the champion fight, but he chokes against Rhydons. Wow. Anyways, Flamethrower with two shot to Rhydon. Uh, Earthquake doesn't really knock me down to any significant HP, and then it'll knock him out pretty easily. And he, next, he sends out his Gyarados. I do have Thunderbolt on my Jotun, so Jotun comes out super easily, knocks him out. This is the first time I use a Jotun outside of Generation 1, like in a playthrough. Anyways, Flamethrower knocks down the champ. Luckily, he puts me in blaze range, so the final Pokemon of his team, when it comes out, will be pretty easy. Luckily for us, Jotun will actually knock it out for us with a Thunder, and, well, he kind of knocks himself out with a Flare Blitz, but, you know, Thunder did most of the work. Anyways, his final Pokemon will be the Pidgeot, and I Fire Blast it just for, you know, just for old time's sake, knocks it out, and we've beaten all 16 gems of the game. And now we're actually going to catch one more Pokemon on the team, which is the Dawn Fan. We're going to do a little training and then head into... Mount Silver. Mount Silver is going to be the final location of the game, our final battle against Red. Red is going to be the ultimate, ultimate trainer of any Pokemon game. So he's going to set, so he's going to start off the battle using his Pikachu. I'm going to send out using Donphan because Donphan has Earthquake. You know, he naturally gets it because I honestly forgot where the TM for Earthquake was. We're going to Earthquake down to Pikachu pretty easily and that's it for the Pikachu. Now, then I send out my Jolteon, I'ma miss my Thunder, but eventually I actually hit it, knocks out the Lapras for us. And then send back my Dawnfan against the Snorlax. Snorlax will actually 1v1 my Dawnfan unfortunately, but I do get a little damage off it. Uh, so I sent my Typhlosion against the Snorlax, it's actually beating me 1v1, so I, so I decided to actually use Smokescreen against the Snorlax and then just drain its accuracy and then send in my Togekiss to Psychic it down. Yes, it's a team effort. Yes, I'm stupid. <laughs> so we beat down the Snorlax with a really annoying strategy. But Blastoise comes out, I'm going to send in my Jolteon and then Thunder will actually knock it out. I could take a Focus Blast pretty well, actually. We'll actually crit and knock it out. And then Charizard comes out, Thunderbolt again, just completely knocks it out. And that's. And then one more Pokemon for the row will be Venusaur. Send my Togekiss to try to finish it off. It actually beats it. It actually beats down my Togekiss. Well, so I gotta send him my Typhlosion. So Typhlosion will finish things off against Red. And that's the end of the challenge. So we've been hard code using only Generation 1 moves. It's a bit of a struggle, a very limited move set. I'll say that. But I hope you guys all enjoyed. Please don't forget to leave a like, comment down below some challenge ideas just like this one, and hopefully I'll pick yours. Anyways, 
Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. I hope you guys all enjoyed. My name is Alpha, and I hope you guys all had a great day. I'm out. Peace.